All right, it's more micro time. Um, just drained the cooling system, and it took a while for water to go th water to go through the radiator. Given how old it is, and the fact that it's actually got collision damage on it from the original repair, I'm replacing it. I found one on eBay, which is just another generic radiator, uh, $150 delivered. So. I'll leave this one in here for now and just give the system a bit of a flush and put a very light coolant mix in it, but as soon as I can I'm going to pull this rat out and replace it. Otherwise, yeah, I think this is why the engine just gradually gets hotter and hotter and hotter on the temperature gauge when running the air conditioning. That's an issue I want to address. I could almost fit a Camry SV21 rat in here because it's, it's more than long enough and more than high enough, but I think the alternator and these hoses will get in the way. Plus, I wouldn't be able to run this fan where it is. Or well, I might be able to, but no, nah, easier just to get a new rad. I'll pull the radiator support and everything off, fix all that up, straighten that out there. It's just a bit of buckling. It's had a minor front end collision, but it hasn't really wrecked anything. It's just bent the rad support and the front quarter panel and the bumper and everything, which has been replaced. So, yeah, not too bad. I would buy a new rad hose set now, but I just paid a $500 power bill, so, yeah. Gotta love the old carbon tax and the price hikes that power companies decided to put on at the same time. It's basically an equivalent of a 30% increase in power costs. So, yeah, you can see more mm, hydrocarbon-based heating in my workshop. <laughs> I think I've got about 20 gallons of Jet A, which is this stuff. I do use it for degreasing and washing stuff, but from now on this aviation turbine fuel is just going to be used for heating. It's just a refined Kero with a smidge of lubricating oil in it, perfectly fine for a workshop heater. Uh, it's really good stuff. And the best part is I get it for free. <laughs> Every now and then we get about a dozen of these drums at the scrapyard and I just drain the remaining dregs out of the bottom of them because the aviation guys don't drain the whole drum. They can't pick up any sediment with their pump. It stops about there. So it's always worth going through and just filling up a drum. Good stuff. And yeah, no more uh, really crazy uh, power experiments for the time being, but we'll work on the power consumption around here and then get right back into it because I've got some nice big transformers and things to play with. Anyway, as you can see, a bit of work been done. I like how the camera display makes this look orange. It's not orange. It's very much red. But I'm going to take the water pump off now. The water pump doesn't feel that bad. I think it was mainly the idlers and a bit of chain noise I was hearing. But I'm going to do it anyway since I've got one. So water pump off. Flush the cooling system. I'll get hoses and things afterwards. I'll just put a light mix in it and not drive the car for the next week or so. Yeah, easy enough. Hmm. I'm really not happy with this Chinese water pump. It's just a lot thinner, a lot more cheaply made than the OEM one. A lot of scrapes and gouges on the housing, or the, the flange. The impeller is definitely nowhere near as good as the other one, which is stainless steel with careful, uh, carefully made oh, centrifugal impeller. This one here not so convinced. I've heard, well, Brad told me pretty much not to use it. Uh, well, he said he was very worried about it. And the OEM pump that came out of that car, there's nothing wrong with it. It's probably been on there 10 years, and until it starts leaking, I don't know, I might either leave this on the shelf, or I might just take it back and find a good OEM one to replace it. Because that is a dirty, cheap part. Just the way it feels. I haven't turned it very much. You shouldn't do that with a new water pump anyway because you'll destroy the seal. But it just doesn't seem right. It's just a generic Chinese part. They, these are the ones that fail after a couple of months. It's, that's the sort of stuff. The dirty cheap ones which you get overcharged for. I got charged almost $80 for that. They're the ones that fail. So, nah, not worth it. Not worth it at all. I'm going to stick with the old one, that's already back on, sealed and glued, well, stuck back into place with a bit of a copper max. We'll just see how it goes. I mean, it's only a town car, 
Um, now that I know the pump bearings are fine, I'm not too concerned about it. But the idler bearings were noisy. There's definitely a bit of noise from the chain, like secondary drive. There's an intermediate sprocket on the uh, timing chain and an intermediate chain. That seems to be making a bit of noise, but apparently that's normal. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, see, I've dumped the coolant, which is still reasonably healthy looking. And I've got the old water pump back on there. It's going to go back on and stay back on until it leaks. There's really no point in replacing it with an inferior quality product. Even just the way the flange is made, this one has a groove in it for the silicon to stick into. It's made to be stuck on with silicon. Whereas the other one, there was two paper gaskets, which were dodgy at best. So, nah. I'll stick with what I've got and what I know. I'll remanufacture that pulley, put that on. I've got my other belt now for the alternator and aircon compressor. I've got the new engine mount. Yeah, let's just get this damn thing back together again. Forget about the Chinese water pump. Okay, well I discovered another engine mount. That's it down there. It attaches to the transmission. I didn't know that was there. I guess I should have removed the battery tray. That's probably what I'll have to do. Yeah. It's up in there somewhere. I'm trying to use the viewfinder to find it. There's the bracket that goes onto the manual transmission. Yeah, it goes up there. Mm, that'll be fun to change. Probably not too hard. <laughs> okay, well let's try and salvage this idler pulley, tensioner pulley. I've modified this old high-speed steel lathe tool which is pretty much rooted. All the edges are burnt and destroyed so I just quickly reground it to a slightly finer point. Originally it had a bit of a, I suppose a grooving tool point on it which was badly chipped and burnt off. So I've just reground it so that I can hopefully bring it in like that and just knock off those little uh, crimps. See, it fits in quite nicely in there, and then as soon as you get to the crimp, it hits it. So, if I bring it in slowly enough, it shouldn't chip the tip off it or shatter it. That's the only other issue is shattering it if I hit the tip, hit these uh, lumps too hard. But this lathe's pretty fairly tight. I can tighten the uh, saddle gib up, gib up a little bit and just feed it in ever so slowly, and it should just carefully take that out, and I can punch the bearing clean out. Shouldn't be too hard. Oh, let's see how well this goes. Okay, power. looks really good. If anything I'll probably take a tiny bit more out but then it won't leave me much to crimp back in there so yeah. Now I'll call that good and we'll try and punch this bearing out. And that's just with a little handmade high speed steel tool. You just take a bit of steel tool blank and grind it to the right shape that you want. That one's carbide tipped but could do similar but it's a V-tip. I don't want to re-grind that. Not with carbide anyway. have to set up my uh, silicon carbide grinding wheel to do that stuff. But yeah, pretty straightforward. Well that's not good. Flash player is completely bugged out on this computer and it's also showing something nasty heading my way. Oh dear. I guess that explains the uh, constant booming, almost sounding like anti-aircraft fire coming from the horizon. And you see this constant rumble and pop and boom. Pretty sure it's not anti-aircraft fire. If it is, well, we're in a bit of trouble, but even if it's a bad storm, then we're still in trouble because I'm trying to work on a car outside. Oh yeah, that's getting loud. And hear that one loud and clear. Yeah, it's coming in pretty good. Yeah. 
Yep. I see them flashes. We're in for some trouble. <laughs> Damn it. We're not done yet. Oh shit. Everything's getting blown around now. Well, little car, I think you're going to have to sit out there as you are. <laughs> At least I got some coolant back in the system so the water pump doesn't dry out. Oh well. I'll work on stuff inside, I'll work on punching that bearing out. It's getting violent out there. <laughs> Should have known, you get a few days of really nice weather, then all of a sudden it takes, takes a shit on you. Damn it. That's not good. <laughs> oh well. We got some massive thunder strikes out here. Tailing. Well, that's working all right. It's almost out. I just put it on the table and gave it one whack with the hammer and it came out. Well, loose anyway. I just got to set it up on a couple of blocks and just tap it all the way through and then carefully press the new one in from the outside. Never strike a bearing race from the inside unless you intend on destroying it. If you hit the centre it'll smash the balls against the uh, outer race and just destroy it. So you always find something that fits just over the outside, usually an old socket or something like that. So that should work just well. It's going to knock it out the rest of the way and should be all good.